Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to Granny B's house. Are you having a good day? No, oh, I hope so. Granny B's having a pretty good day. Are you remembering to be kind to those people around you? Are you treating other people the way you'd like to be treated? Are you doing little things every day to make the world a better place? Well, even if you're little, you can do little things to make the world a better place. Don't ever forget that. Every act of kindness counts. Well, I have to ask you if you've ever had a sleepover at your house or at a friend's house or maybe with your cousins or siblings. It's just uh, fun to kind of sleep outside with friends and and sometimes you have to worry about things like aliens that's what Arthur's worried about this is Arthur's first sleepover written by Mark Brown and you know his little sister DW can be a bit of a problem in Arthur's life so Let's just see what Arthur and his friends are up to with this sleepover. Arthur was getting ready for his first sleepover. It isn't until Saturday, called Mother. Come in and eat your breakfast. Father laughed while he read the paper. Some man in town says he saw a spaceship, he chuckled. Probably the same man who thinks he saw Elvis at the mall, joked Mother. I don't believe in aliens, said Arthur. Well, the National Requirer does, said D.W., and they pay a lot of money for a picture of one. Whoa. On the way to school, the girls were all talking about the spaceship. Arthur wanted to talk about his sleepover. We can have the sleepover in my tent, said Arthur. You wouldn't catch me out in a tent with these spaceships landing, said Muffy. Bad news, said Buster. My mom thinks I'm too young for a sleepover. I can't come. But you have to, said Arthur. It's my first sleepover and you're my best friend. Why do they call them sleepovers, said Francine. No one ever sleeps. That afternoon, Arthur told his mother about Buster's problem. Well, I'll see what I can do, said Mother. Arthur crossed his fingers while she dialed. Buster's mom did all the talking. Yes, no, of course not, said Mother. Absolutely. Good talking with you, too. Bye. Mother smiled and nodded her head yes. Hooray, cried Arthur. Does Buster's mom know about the spaceship, asked D.W. I saw flashing lights from one today. I think that was the pizza shop sign, said Mother. Saturday morning, Arthur was outside making the tent cozy for his sleepover. His family helped, too. I was just thinking, said D.W., how do we know you're our real parents and not aliens in their bodies? Did you brush your teeth, asked Father, and pick up that mess in your room, young lady, said Mother. Okay, okay, said D.W., they sound real to me, said Arthur. Arthur was looking for his flashlight when Buster and the brain arrived. It was here a minute ago, said Arthur. I wonder if you'll see any aliens, said D.W. If we do, said the brain, how will we communicate with them? Forget about communicating, said D.W. Take pictures for the National Requirer. Use my camera. We can split the money. Let's make some signs, said Arthur. Good idea, said Buster. But first, I have to call my mom. Look what D.W. has. I think she has Arthur's 
flashlight. Oh, the signs say, aliens, welcome. We are your friends. Please do my homework. <laughs> After they finished their signs, they unpacked. I brought a few snacks, said the brain. I brought a rubber snake, said Arthur, to keep D.W. away. What did you bring, Buster? Just my baseball cards and my blankie. Do you think we will really see aliens tonight? No, do you, said Arthur. Highly unlikely, said the brain. The boys forgot all about aliens. They were too busy telling jokes and trading baseball cards. Pillow fight, screamed Buster. Quiet, said the brain. What's that sound? Footsteps, whispered Buster. And they're getting closer, said Arthur. Oh, oh, pizza delivery, called an unfamiliar voice. Compliments of the sleepover parents. Everyone laughed. I almost stopped breathing, said Arthur. I almost wet my pants, said Buster. Before they knew it, they heard another voice. Lights out, said Father. It's after nine. Bedtime. All ready, said Arthur. Thank you for the pizza, sir, said the brain. You're welcome, said Father. Good night. Good night, the boys said sweetly. But as soon as they heard Father go back in the house, they shot out of their sleeping bags like cannonballs. I heard bedtime, said the brain, but I didn't hear sleep time. Let's tell spooky stories, said Arthur. Um, how about cards, said Buster. Just as it was Arthur's turn to go fish, they saw the flashing lights. They dropped their cards. It got very quiet. Aliens, whispered Buster. I don't hear any footsteps, whispered Arthur. Of course not, said the brain. They haven't landed yet. Lights flashed again. They're headed for our tent. Run for your lives. No one could find the flaps. Help, screamed Buster. Let me out. The tent collapsed. That didn't stop them from making a run for it, but a large maple tree did. Ouch, said Arthur. I'm calling my mom, said Buster. Look, said the brain, the lights are coming from your house. I think I know this alien, said Arthur. It's from the planet DW. Arthur noticed the things they used to make signs, and that gave him an idea. Let's put our tent back up. I think I know a way we can teach that little space creature a lesson. Later, Arthur crept quietly into the house. D.W. was in her room laughing. What's so funny, he asked. What are you doing up here, said D.W.? Did you come in because you're scared? Not really, said Arthur. I'm returning your camera. You'll probably see an alien before we will. I doubt it, said D.W. Well, just in case, Arthur said, sweet dreams. Then very quietly, he returned to his tent. Oh my, a minute later, D.W. heard a tap at her window. Aliens, she screamed. She screamed so loud it woke up everyone in the neighborhood. Everyone except Buster, the brain, and Arthur. When mother and father went out to check, the boys were sleeping like little angels. Of course, after mother and father went back into the house, it was another story. <laughs> well, what a fun sleepover. Boy, having a little sister sometimes can be a trial. But having friends around you who can make each thing you do fun, that makes it better, doesn't it? And even if there are aliens scaring you, you have your friends together and, and they're just there to help you through those scary times. 
Well, you know, Granny B's not very scary. Nah, I'm just, I'm just an old lady in a bumblebee costume. And you know Granny B loves you, and I want you to come back and see me again sometime, okay? Because I want to read you another story. Bye-bye.